Well, good morning, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to this different but good Sunday morning worship service. We are recording this service ahead of time in case the storm were to knock out power. And recording it from our home this evening. Um, the Lord is just with me, giving me peace to do this today because at this time of the recording tonight, um, Janie and Noah are at the ER at Baptist. Um, they just um, got them in a the room. And so do keep them in prayer. Um, pray for Noah that this kidney situation will improve. Um, no singing this morning. I don't sing. <laughs> if I did, I'd run everybody off of Facebook. But I am going to share the Word of God with you today. So if you have your Bibles, go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3. We're going to start with verse 1. Word of the Lord says the following, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And the air of the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel lay down to sleep. Then the Lord called Samuel, he said, answered and said, Here am I. And notice this in verse 5, he ran to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not, lie down again. Father, we love you, we praise you, we give you glory. We ask God that you would touch us today. I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I ask God that you would give us strength in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I'd like to share with you this thought. What to do when things get rare. What to do when things get rare. The whole text this morning deals with the call of Samuel in the early age. Here we see what is going on with Eli and the corruption in the temple. Earlier in the text, Eli's sons treated the offerings of the Lord with contempt, according to chapter 2, verse 17. And so this new beginning with Samuel requires divine justice. Because Eli had failed to dis discipline his sons for their corruption, and then thus he failed also God as well as the sons, the whole family, which he recognized and ignored. And Dr. Voris in his book, The Pentateuch, notes on the Pentateuch, he always said, what can you do with sin? You can either hide it, you can either go deeper into it, you can ignore it, or you can confess it and forsake it. Eli and his family failed to do that. And Eli was the pre high priest of the temple at the time. So the story of Samuel's call establishes his authority and ushers a restoration of leadership of God in the house of God. This reminds me of the New Testament scripture in 1 Peter 4.17 that says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And Eli was so nonchalant we notice here that in 1 Samuel 3, 1, And the child ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days, and there was no open vision. The word of the Lord was precious, no open vision. You know, when we first look at this, this word precious, we think of a precious child. Or we think of precious so rare and cherished, but... But it was because it was rare, because the word precious in the Hebrew means rare. In the New American Standard in 1 Samuel 3, 1, it reads, Now the boy Samuel was ministering unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. So what happened here was sin took Eli and his family further than they wanted to go and left them worse than they had been. What does Paul say in the New Testament in Romans 3.23? For 
For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So what do we do when the word of the Lord is rare? As we see in 1 Samuel 3 this morning. When it seems like we can't get a vision or a touch from God. And it seems like God is a million miles away. Keep in mind what's going on in this story. There was still religious stuff going on. Oh yeah, people were going to the temple. People were giving and offerings. People were doing the routines. But they lost focus of their relationship with God. They became like the church at Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2 where they left their first love. Many people are today are confused by the fact that there is a religious revival in the land and also some of the worst moral and ethical problems at the same time. Could it be that while there is no shortage of religious words experienced, Nonetheless, the Word of God is rare. The true Word of God is rare. The lack of the Word was not so much connected with God's reluctance to communicate with the people as it was with the priests of the temple and, and being willing to share it. One commentator said that this corruption lasted around 300 years. 300 years of religiosity, but no true worship. 300 years of religious activities, but no worship. 300 years of going through the motions. So yes, the Word of God was rare and visions weren't frequent. Here we are in 2022. Politics once more dominates the church. Sin is dismissed as mistakes. Churches have become more self-centered instead of Christ-centered. In fact, one Facebook post this week said the following, People always talking about your favor, your power, your calling, your destiny, your identity, your purpose, your finances, your blessings, and your next level. But they're never teaching you anything about having a relationship with the one who blesses you with that. And friend, let me tell you, before you can expect God to touch you, before you can expect God to bless you, you've got to have a relationship with God. He's not an ATM machine where you can pull up and get what you want just because you show up at church, just because you sing a song out of a hymn book or listen to the preacher preach. You need, my friend, to quit being religious and have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That, friend, is what Eli was doing. He had religion. But he quit having relationship. Dismissing sin, compromising the worship, and making it about self rather than God. But what about Samuel? How did he handle things when things got rare? How do we handle things when things get rare? I mean, let's face it. Church of God folk or Pentecostal folk, Pentecostal holiness folk. And even amongst our own movement, the Word of God's getting rare and the visions are getting infrequent. And what we need to do in this time of rarity is first of all, like Samuel did, hear God's voice. Hear God's voice. Verses 1-4 through four in 1 Samuel 3 says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days, and there was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down into his place, in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And the air of the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And Samuel lay down asleep, and the Lord called and Samuel and said, Here am I. Four times in this story in 1 Samuel 3, God speaks to Samuel. The first three times, he thinks it's Eli. But the fourth time, he realizes who it was. Because Eli said, "Don't basically, don't bug me anymore. It's the Lord, not me. One of the marks of a faithful servant 
is having an attentive ear and an immediate response. But you see, Samuel never heard God's voice before because the Word of God was rare and visions were infrequent. So he did not know who was calling him. Like Saul, the cars of Samuel's call and conversion occurred at the same time, except that Samuel's experience was at night while Saul was a blazing light when he heard God's voice. Eli was discerning enough to realize that God was speaking to the boy and he told him how to respond. And when Samuel realized it was God and not Eli, he accepted it. 1 Samuel 3.10 And the Lord came and stood and called as other times Samuel, Samuel, the Lord, Samuel, speak, speak for thy servant here. Why did he go for the first three times to Eli? Why was this? It was because the power of God was so rare that Samuel did not know what, his initial, what he was initially dealing with. I feel sometimes God, when God calls, people are so consumed in these last days, they do not even know it. Like we talked about in Sunday school this morning, the two on Emmaus Road were so sorrowful, they didn't even realize it. Jesus showed up to minister to the city but he wept over it because they missed his voice and the visitation. Genesis 28, 16, And Jacob awake now of sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew not. We need to, what we need to do in these last days that are perilous is hear the voice of God when all things seem powerless. That's what Elijah did. He stood in 1 Kings 19, and heard all these other things, but the Lord wasn't in it. And then a still, small voice. In Acts 27, during the shipwreck scene, Paul said in verses 22 through 24, Now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me an angel this night, whose I am, an angel of God this night, of whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God had given all of thee that are all of thee, all of them that shall sail with thee. In Revelation two seven, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. As I said last Sunday evening, listen to God's voice. Now I will say this, too many people are looking to the priest for the voice of God instead of, instead of confirmation to the voice. This is what happened initially here. You listen to God's voice through His Word and through the power of the Holy Spirit. That anointing that teaches you like 1 John 2, 27 talks about. The Scripture, that's the all-inspired Word of God, According to 2 Timothy 3, 16. The second thing Samuel did in the midst of rarity was he obeyed God. In verses 10 through 14 of 1 Samuel 3, And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that hears shall tingle. And that day I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For, for I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged, with the sacrifice nor the offering forever. Samuel called himself a servant of the Lord. This means he was consecrated to do what God said to do. And we are called to be servants today. We are called to be servants according to Colossians 3.24 and Galatians 5.13. Samuel had to deliver an uncomfortable word in verses 11-14. through 14. When we obey God, it's going to be uncomfortable. 
A lot of time when we think we obey God, everything's going to be rosy and everything's going to be peachy. But can I tell you something? It's not going to be easy obeying God. The Old Testament prophets knew this. Because in Isaiah 6, 9, during the call of Isaiah, and he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Jeremiah 5.21, Jeremiah said, Hear now all this foolish people, without understanding, with eyes, and see not, which have ears, and hear not. Ezekiel 12.2, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see, and see not. They have ears to hear, and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. In the New Testament, Jesus even said that their people's hearts were wax gross in Matthew 13.15. Paul said in Acts 28, 27, the same thing. For the heart of this people is wax gross. Not everyone's going to receive you. I can remember my days doing mission trips in New York City in the South Bronx. There were some folks that would threaten you and not receive you. I can remember my time in Andrews going out knocking on doors and I, I knocked on this one lady's door, and she and I was told her where, where I pastored and invited her to church. She said, we're not of your faith. I remember Winston-Salem doing street witnessing. And this guy pulled a gun on me. And I nearly, nearly died if he would have pulled that trigger, but he didn't. I gave him... Gave him a track and told him about the Lord. And I saw that gun go back in his pocket. But I've also been witnessing the folks in Winston-Salem when I first started in full-time ministry that just laughed in my face. I can remember Greensboro pastoring the East Windover Church of God. We called it Inner City Hope Church of God when I was there. Went out into the Phillips Avenue com community here in Greensboro, one of the roughest communities. I was giving out food, and I was getting ready to leave a bag of food on the door, and all of a sudden I heard somebody say, Get off my porch or I'm going to kill you. But I left it there anyway. But not everybody's going to receive you. But no matter what, church, you got to keep obeying God. Lighten the burdens of others. Galatians 6, 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6, 10, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially to them that are in a household of faith. Lead others to Christ. That's why we've been empowered, according to Acts 1, 8, to be witnesses. And in Acts 22, 15, For thou shalt be as witness unto all men, which thou hast seen as hurt. And then glorify your life in Christ, that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. We need to do that in times of rarity. Thirdly, we need to walk with humility in time of rarity. Verses 15 through 18 of 1 Samuel 3 says, And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision, that meaning being humble. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here am I. And he said, what is the thing the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide not from me. God do, so, God do so to thee, and more also if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he has said unto thee. And Samuel told him every whit, and he hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. Samuel feared which means he walked in humility because he was humble, but bold enough to share what God showed him. We must walk in humility as well. Romans 12.10, Paul said, Be kindly affection one another and brotherly love and honor preferring one another. 1 Peter 5.6, Humble yourselves up for the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. You see, someone had to because those because those that were supposed to weren't doing it. Eli and his family and priesthood was not doing what they were supposed to do. 
They were living in pride and sin, and pride is very deadly. They were living in pride because they were relying on self rather than God. James even tells us in James 4, 6, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. We are living in a day what the Bible calls perilous times. We pe People have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. So the people of God need a precious word and a fresh vision. That comes when we allow the fire of revival to touch us. Note one more thing in this text. I'm going back up to verse 3. And the air and the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of, the God was, ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. But this is actually translated in the Hebrew, the lamp had not yet burned out. No matter what may be going on in this world today, no matter what may be going on in the church today, don't let your light burn out. Burn out. Keep the oil, the presence of the Holy Ghost, in it by living for God in times of rarity. Father, in the name of Jesus, these are rare times. You see what we're going through and you see what we're facing today. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that Lord, you would touch each and every one that watched this message today. I pray for those that are lost, that, Lord, you would save their souls, that they would, Lord, repent of their sins, accept you into their heart, believe on you that you are the Son of God, and confess you as Lord and Savior. I pray today for those that have a need, that, Lord, you would give them that fresh touch in rare times. We'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in for evening service at 5 today. God bless you. Bye-bye.